Welcome back everybody. So it's uh, almost 1 a.m. I got to get up for work in about seven hours. But <laughs> I want to do a quick video to, uh, I probably won't get it uploaded tonight, but I want to do a quick video about uh, the draft tonight. It's Friday night. Um, I did the Friday Night Magic Draft, Throne of Eldraine again. And I want to kind of go over what I built and why and how I did. So I went there with every intention of doing the, the red blue draw two <laughs> kind of concept, but apparently like both the people to my right uh, were drafting red. So I really didn't get hardly any red. I think I literally only drafted one red card and that was a scorching dragon fire on like the first or second pack or something. So yeah, I couldn't draft red. <laughs> so, and then I ended up and like my second or third pack, I pulled this guy, Revenge of the Ravens. This card is so broken for draft, it is unbelievable. I love this card. Oh, if you could draft multiple of these, you pretty much lock the game. Um, it's just, uh, it really just nullifies anything under like a three power. People don't even bother wasting their time trying to attack you with it uh, because it's just gonna give you life. <laughs> so, um, this card was pretty awesome, so as soon as I saw this, I'm like, well, I'm definitely going to have to run black, plus I wasn't getting the red, so it looks like black's going to have to be my kind of destruction color. So, uh, oh, for if you don't know, I'll read it out. It's uh, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. So, it, literally, a, a two-power creature attacks you, you're going to break even pretty much, and they're, they're going to take damage. So, so yeah, it's... Uh, Unless they got like three or four or, or higher power creatures, they're not even going to bother. So they're not going to ping you for one with a 2-2 two -two or something like that. So yeah, they're uh, and then take one every time they do. So that card was awesome. As soon as I pulled that, I knew I had to run black. Um, and then I think pretty early on, I also got a bake in the pie. Bake into a pie. Yeah, bake into a pie. Which is a uh, you know, great removal from black. Plus you get... A food token it removes anything destroys any creature plus you get a food token which is you know food tokens are awesome in draft so but the problem was that apparently i think somebody else was running black too so my downfall was that i my epic downfall <laughs> irony was that i uh, i only ran i didn't get a lot of removal and I wasn't running red, and I wouldn't have gotten any removal in red anyway. I, I, literally, the Scorching Dragonfire is the only red removal spell that came across my uh, my plate there. So I only really had three removal spells, and Festive Funeral is just way too expensive. Um, it, it's just it, five, and it only does what? It only gives negative, negative, negative X, negative X, which is uh, the number of cards in your graveyard. So... I didn't really get to use that much. It was just too expensive for anything that I needed to kill anyway. Um, so I didn't get enough removal, so I didn't do very well. I ended up running mono black. I tried to run uh, black and blue early on. So I did. I was pulling blue flyers mainly. So I did get a lock dragon. And I got two of the steel, gray, steel gaze griffins, which are great cards, especially if you're drawing cards. Um, and then the Fairy Vandal, awesome card, flashes in, and I did get two Runaway Togethers. I almost ran Black Blue, and I probably should have because Mono Black gets a little bit restricted, plus I was having a problem with creatures. I, I had creatures in the deck, they just weren't that effective. So I had uh, Resolute Rider, which is, which is great because you can give it uh, Indestructible and Lifelink, but it's just such a weak toughness that people were just killing that thing as soon as I put it out. Because, you know, obviously they were, as soon as I put it out, they'd make sure I was tapped out and they'd kill it. So, uh, and it cost four, so it wasn't easy to get out. And then having to have that five mana for your, or at least the three mana to make them indestructible was very, very tough. So he was, he would have been good if I had some kind of mana ramp, but there's no mana ramp in black in here. Um, a Reaper and I, pretty decent card but just uh too expensive i mean seven drop i mean it's crazy uh the borrow witches i just i, I had knights but it seemed like whenever i got this the, the knights weren't in my graveyard i kept getting this early game which is terrible uh five mana cost i couldn't cast them early on and then there was nothing in my graveyard by the time i did get to cast them 
Um, Elite Headhunter. Uh, I never actually got this one on the board, I think. Maybe once I got it on the board. I think I got it out once, and it's just not too effective. Um, Order of Midnight was pretty good because it kept let me bring creature cards back to my hand, which uh, my most important creature I was able to get back to my hand a couple of times, but it wasn't enough. If I had a few more of these, it probably would have been better. Eye Collector, uh, there's so much mill in this set. I was already getting milled. Uh, I was having trouble. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to mill myself anymore. Uh, it's a great card if you build a deck around it, but this deck was not built around it, so didn't do very well. The uh, Lost Legion, the Scry 2 feature is awesome, but I wasn't running a lot of night beef up stuff because it was just mono black. If I'd have black and white with a lot of extra night stuff in there, it might have been a good card. The Scry 2 was cool, but 2 3 just. Yeah, it didn't really do much for me. Um, the Smitten Swordmaster would have been nice, but I kept getting an early game where there was just uh, no knights in play. I didn't have enough knights to really do much of anything. It did win me one game. I was able to, to do that and uh, do the final final point of damage there. Um, and then Lothwain Paladin here. He uh, He's all right. Good creature. Just, uh, you know, just too, too low a toughness on the black creatures. He just... Didn't stay out very long to do anything. The two most important creatures I had were the Tempting Witch, which I did get two of. So I was able to pop out food tokens, and I was able to use those food tokens to, uh, there you go, you can see there, tap two and tap the the, the witch, and you can uh, sacrifice a food to do three damage to a target opponent. And they are good little chump blockers, because they are one three. So, and they're only three mana to get out there. So... Those guys are great for draft in black. And then uh, this guy was the beast, the ginger brute. I got three ginger brutes. So <laughs> these guys were awesome. If you could get one of these in your opening hand, it was just early quick damage. Um, unblockable unless the creatures have haste. Uh, if you pay the one. So, I mean, for a one drop, one, one, that you can give them haste. And then... I kept being as evil as possible and throwing a giant skewer on him. <laughs> so he's unblockable 3-2 at that point. So uh, he was he was just, he was wrecking the board for me. Um, so my first four games, I was undefeated. I went 2-0, uh, 2-0 in the first two rounds. It was four rounds tonight. There was, uh, I think, 14 players. It was two rounds tonight. So I went 2-0, 2-0 the first two hands. And then... Uh, one two the second one because he, he had a really good um, red and green deck with and he pulled I don't know how this guy does it every tournament <laughs> I always lose to him because he he will pull like six scorching dragon fires and a whole bunch of other removal in like every tournament I don't know how he does it I only saw that one go across the whole table that we were at he was at the other table this time but somehow he got tons of removal um, a card that was really, that I think is really underrated is the Foreboding Fruit. This card, I ended up, <laughs> um, I ended up winning some games with this card just by making the opponent draw, I get them down to like two life or four life or six life and I would make them draw cards and lose the life to, to finish them off. Um, because I was around mono black, I always got the food token every time I cast these. Uh, the problem was I couldn't cast these as much as I would have liked because there's so many mill decks out there. I was already getting milled there. Half the time I have this in my hand and I only have three cards left in my library. And I'm like, uh, I can't do nothing. So, but I drafted one, two, three, four, five. One of which is foil. See, I got even foil. So I drafted five of these. So a deck built around this card would have been, you know, pretty awesome. This is a great card. Um... Because you can do it on yourself, you can sack two life to get two cards, which in black is huge. But also, like I said, I would use it as a damage spell. I'd make them draw two cards and, and lose two life. <laughs> so so uh, it was my final blow damage spell also. And uh, let me see what else. Uh, so I had a couple artifact creatures because I was running mono black, but... I think I got the Clockwork Servant out once. <laughs> I didn't even bother stacking these two because the carriage eats up, being a vehicle, it eats up two of your creatures. And in draft, you just don't have enough expendable creatures over power two to, to waste your time with it. And he's only a 4-4. Four four. So, yeah, I didn't stack him. 
And I didn't stack the roving keep just because it was just too pricey. Seven, seven drop. Uh, probably put in good creature, but it's just too pricey. So um, that's kind of what I what I ran. I did get a lucky clover uh, really early on because I was planning on doing the uh, red blue draw two thing, you know. Um, this guy with the uh, with some of the red adventure cards would have been awesome. But I didn't have enough adventure cards in the black in the mono black. Uh, I stacked it the first few games. I probably shouldn't have. I ended up pulling it out after the, after like the third game, I think, I, or third round. I pulled it out because it just wasn't doing any good for me. I wasn't using it enough. Uh, it did help a couple times on a couple of them, but but not enough to keep it in there. With a deck built around this, this card is awesome. But by itself, not so much. Ironically, these are the three end cards I had in the three packs I opened. There's two food tokens and an adventure token. So I ended up using those all night because I kept creating all the food tokens with the tempting witches and the uh, the foreboding fruits and stuff. So, um, like I said, I, it was four rounds. The first two, I, w I was 2-0. I won both on 2-0. The next one, I lost 1-2. And then the last one, I lost 0-2 because uh, he just had a, a much much stronger deck. Uh, he was running Knights. He went red and white Knights and nobody else at our table was running red and white. Uh, as far as Knights go, they were taking the red damage spells and stuff, but they weren't running the Knights. So he ended up with this crazy Knight deck full of, uh, he had the red double strikers that were just unbearable. He, he pulled like, I think he had like eight or nine of the red double strikers. Uh, and there's two different ones. There's one with like a two power and then one with like a, a three power, I think, uh, or four, I don't remember. But, uh, and then he had all, he had a couple of the white, uh, white and red knights that gave all other knights plus one, plus one. And he kept getting multiples of those on the board at the same time. It was, it was just too, too beastly. Plus he had the, the red pump spells as well. So he was, pumping up the double strikers and sending them over. They were just, yeah, it was, you could only last a couple turns once you start really getting those out there. So, um, so I ended up finishing seventh overall. Um, not great. It was right in the middle of the field. <laughs> so out of 14 players, I finished seventh. So I just kind of want to give a quick rundown of what I drafted and, and kind of give you a little warning. Mono black doesn't, just has too many weaknesses um, unless you get a lot of a lot of removal to deal with your opponent's creatures and eh, it's just a little too a little too tough um, the ginger brutes though ginger brutes I'm still saying that's one of the best one of the best things you can draft because you can put it in any color deck and I mean if you get a ginger brute on the first turn you're probably gonna get at least a few hits on them before before they can take care of it you know uh, and taste so it pops out the first thing if you play first you know land ginger root day one so great little card um somewhat broken for for draft but easy easy to deal with so not really broken broken but let me know what you guys think let me know what you think i, I should have done or if i sh if you thought i should have gone with the blue even though i didn't have a lot in there i mean these were really good blue cards I just wasn't sure I wanted to worry about the mana lock issues running two colors when I literally only had, what, seven blue cards in the whole deck? You know, I mean, I just, I was just too worried about mana lock. And I don't even think I would have run this one because that really would have locked me up. So really, it would have only been six and only three of them were creatures. Well, four of them were creatures, but only three of them were flyers. So I just kind of, I don't think I drew enough blue to make it happen. What do you guys think? Do you think I should have gone with the blue-black combo? Like blue-black flyers and, and food tokens? Or do you think I made the right decision by going mono-black? Just uh, I just didn't get good enough pulls to make it happen. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sure you want to see what else, I, what else I grabbed. So there was a Scorching Dragonfire. I ended up getting handed a Dwarven Mind at the end. A beloved princess at the end and then i hate drafted two cards because i didn't want somebody else having them good old once upon a time and love struck beast there was nothing else more important in the pack anyway um there was no good black creatures or, or removal spells in in those packs and this was at the very end of the last pack uh so i just i saw those being too powerful and i knew there was nothing in there that would have helped my deck anymore so i grabbed those just so nobody could use them against me 
And plus, they're good cards. So, <laughs> at least I got a little bit of value out of, out of the draft. So, <laughs> so it wasn't a complete bust. But, yeah, I probably didn't. Probably didn't get my draft money back on those, but maybe. I don't know. I think it was like 13 bucks. So, anyways, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I should have gone with the with the blue flyers in there and risked doing the two colors. And if you would have stacked the lock dragon even with such little amount of blue, because I would have wanted to go more swamps than islands. So let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to hear some comments on it. Uh, let me know how your draft went tonight. Uh, and yeah, if you got anything else you want to add to it, feel free to comment. I, I love chatting with people. So every, uh, every view and comment and like is hugely appreciated. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Take care.